Hey everybody, what is up? This is Nikki Sounds with Pink Room Production and welcome to the Pink Room. The Pink Room that also happens to be my bedroom studio. Bedroom. Studio. Bedroom. Studio. Bed. 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 Bedroom. Studio. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I think you get the idea. So today we are going to talk about making music at home, how you can be more efficient, more productive. I'm going to share some tips and tricks. Maybe you're on a budget. I'm also going to share some free resources, pretty much the bare minimum of what you need to be able to continue to make music when you can't leave your house. So let's head to the bedroom studio and I'll show you there. So here we are again in the studio. So you can see a little bit of gadgets and gizmos I've got around here. Um, we'll talk about them a little bit, but I wanna talk more specifically about the procedures, the mindset you should have while making music at home that will prove to be really effective when you're actually at home creating. So working from home can be really distracting sometimes. As you saw, you may be really close to your bed and just wanna lay in it or go out to the kitchen for a snack or have roommates or other people that could be distracting because you just wanna hang out with them. So the first thing I wanna tell you about working from home is create a schedule where you're gonna dedicate that time to making music and turn off any distractions. I know for me, that means that I put my phone on airplane mode. I do not allow myself to look at it for that amount of time that I'm working from home and creating music. Another good thing is to let other people in your house know that that's when you will be creating, not only so they don't knock on your door and tell you to be quiet if you are um, bumping tunes, but also so that way they don't come and distract you. You guys set that boundary ahead of time and you know that that will be really effective for you when you're actually there creating and nobody's gonna come in and distract you. And then the one last thing I would like you to do is just make sure your space is set up and clean so that way there are no, there's nothing around you that's gonna cloud your mind to actually staying focused during that amount of time that you set aside to make music while you are in your house. Okay, so now that we got the preliminary part out of the way about what you need to do when working at home, I'm gonna teach you the little tips to actually be creative, some tools that could be useful to you and where to find them, especially if you're on a budget. So during this quarantine time when you have to be at home, some of us may be more productive than others. It may be difficult to actually set creative goals. So the first thing that I want you to have at your resource when it comes to just having an output is something to document with. So something that you probably should have would be a cellular device, look at my little pug, and a journal. Um, I think these are really great tools that are probably things that you already have. If you don't already have a journal, you can get them pretty cheap. And they're really, really, really useful to utilize your voice memos, utilize downloading free beat making apps so that way you can just create on the go, create when you have that little bit amount of time to do so, write down your ideas for a song, write down lyrics, write down concepts. Documenting is a really great way to just get output without having much expectation. And it could be something you reference later and see amazing ideas there or amazing rhythms, amazing rhymes, amazing beats and sounds. You can do a lot with a phone. There are several free apps out there. So really utilize the phone and voice memos and the tools that you already have. They can make really effective sound recordings, especially if you're at home and you work normally work with other producers, but you can't go into the studio. You can record voice memos and send it to them. You can put on headphones, um, set it to a click track and actually play the music and record your vocals into this. Again, you wanna make sure that you have a quiet environment around you, but it can be a really useful tool. I don't want you to go out and feel like you have to buy things that you already, that you may not already have. So definitely utilize the phone, utilize a journal, and that's my first tip, documentation. So at least this time, you know that you have physical evidence of output that you've made. And if you're looking to dive deeper and to learn more about making music on your phone and really minimalist setups, I have a great resource for you. His name is Intempus Music. You can check him out in the description below. I have his Instagram handle and website linked. And he does really, really cool stuff with really minimal equipment and makes beats on his phone. It's really effective and it's definitely, I think, where the future of music making is going. So do not underestimate that power and be sure to check him out. So other than documenting, the second thing that I would recommend that you use to make music at home is a digital audio workstation, also known as a DAW. 
DAWs are most commonly stored on laptops. I have Ableton Live on mine. That's where I make music all the time. That's where I can go remote. If I'm, you know, headed to a different location, I can take my laptop with me. And at a minimum, that is all I need to make music because the keyboard actually functions as a way to program in sound. And then there is a built-in microphone to the laptop. If you are on a budget and you really are not interested right now in downloading a DAW, such as Ableton or Logic Pro, or Pro Tools or many others that are not free. There are some free DAWs that I would recommend for you, for you to just get ideas going in there. The first one is GarageBand. A lot of people hate on it, but there's a lot of capability within there if you really get to know the tools that you're working with. And if you don't have any other options right now and you're sitting at home, then why don't you give it a shot? Just try out GarageBand, just get those creative juices flowing. Audacity is another free recording program that you can download offline. That's where I started just getting beats in there, just staying creative, doing something that's active is really what I highly recommend the most. And this is a great tool if you do not have a MacBook and you only have a PC, then you can download Audacity. Okay, so at a minimum, I want you to document, I want you to utilize the technology you already have, notebooks, anything you can to have an output. Now this next section is gonna get a little more advanced, so if you're just really just trying to stay active and do something creative, um, go seek out digital audio workstation resources or see what capabilities and apps you can find on your phone to really keep you beat making and recording music and singing and writing lyrics. But if you are looking to make a bigger investment or spend more time and energy and detail into the actual music making in your studio, then I'm gonna talk about three more items that can be really useful to you. Okay, so the first thing would be to invest in a microphone. Woohoo! And this is my microphone right here. I currently use the SM7B. This is definitely a more high-end microphone. I just bought it a couple a couple months ago, and it's actually the second microphone that I've ever used in my studio. The first one I bought five years ago, which was a used condenser microphone from Guitar Center. It was $50. And so far, the music I've had out and the music I've made, I've been able to create, you know, I created really high quality music with it because most importantly, when it comes to making music is that content is a lot higher value than equipment. So if you're right now looking to invest in a nice studio or you've been making music for a really long time and then now you're at home and you have to make music at home, you know, research microphones, find one that you really like, find one that has good recommendations. Um, I really like this microphone. I think it's worth it for where I am at in my career when it comes to price range. But do not go and purchase expensive equipment if you are just starting out or if you really don't have much experience with recording and you're just trying to test it out and see if it's actually something you like to do. So if you are looking for a more affordable microphone, then there's plenty of options online. You can find pretty good ones that can record well under $100. So research them, look at reviews, watch other videos that talk about you know microphone, com microphone comparisons that are out there. Just the number one thing that I'm going to recommend to you if you're looking for a lower end microphone is to make sure it has some sort of gain control device on it. Um, gain control is a whole concept, but in short, that pretty much means that you can kind of adjust the volume of the sound going in so when it outputs, it may not be as loud or as quiet. So if you're recording directly into a computer, for example, using a USB microphone, you wanna be able to have some control on the mic where you can adjust the sound if while recording it, it sounds too loud and it's clipping and distorted, then you can actually on the microphone turn down your um, the way that the microphone receives your input so that way it's not overloading the system. So speaking of gain control, the second device that I would recommend is an audio interface. An audio interface allows you to have better control over the inputs going into your computer, whether that's controlling the gain or recording multiple input sources at once. This is the audio interface I use. As you can see, you have two inputs, two ways to control the gain, a master out um, to actually hear the volume. There's also a headphone jack that plugs in. Um, so. It's really useful when recording multiple inputs, when wanting to have better gain control, 
Again, you know, if your microphone doesn't have it built on its own, um, and this is another step that you want to have to have better control over just your recording experience and getting your ideas in the computer, then I definitely recommend an audio interface. Again, it's not always necessary if you have a microphone and you just want to test that out for a little bit and it has good ability to actually control the gain, um, the volume going into the system. but. You know, an audio interface is something that can be really helpful, really useful, help you control the sound that's going in and make it clean and crisp. And then lastly, the third item I would recommend is some sort of MIDI controller or MIDI interface, which MIDI is pretty much you can use a device to actually record in beats or sounds. A lot of that data comes from actually within the digital audio workstation already, but these tools will allow you to play the music. So this is a little tiny um, affordable MIDI keyboard that I use when I'm on the road. It um, resembles a keyboard, so you know if you're used to playing the keys or are aware of certain pitches, then it's really effective when hooking up to your digital audio workstation and making music through there. I love taking this piece of equipment with me if I'm on a plane or you know, in a new place or just going out to a coffee shop, I can bring this with me, just bring my laptop, maybe a pair of headphones and make music remotely. So I definitely recommend something that's tiny and small. Obviously there are much bigger MIDI keyboards. Um, you can go online, look them up and um, find something that's useful and works for you based on your goals and maybe your previous talent. If you are a piano player like me, I definitely utilize my full 88 key keyboard a lot in the studio that I can turn into a MIDI interface and actually play piano, play different sounds into the keyboard with a full range. Another type of MIDI interface um, is commonly just called a beat pad. So this has several beats, you know, if you're a drummer or you're really more interested in actually making beats and sounds and manipulating sounds, then um, this is a great tool. This is a pretty simple one. You know, you have multiple, how much is that? 16 pads and um, some ways to manipulate the sound of them, um, whether you're using effects, um, audio effects or anything like that, that can all be mapped onto this device. So little beat pads, this at the same time, can also be used as a beat pad. You just hit the keys and can assign different beats to them. But you know, having a tool other than the keyboard, most computer keyboards on most digital audio workstations, you can use the actual keyboard of the computer to make beats, um, but sometimes that's not always effective or it can be a little distracting. So if you are looking to invest in something to just have a clearer vision of your workspace, then I definitely recommend um, looking into MIDI devices to help you. So whoever you are out there right now, you know, whatever you're going through, maybe you're used to going into the studio, maybe you're used to collaborating and using other friends recording equipment, or you've had a, um, muse a bedroom studio for a while, but you just haven't really been able to be productive, then I definitely recommend, you know, see what's working, see what's not working. Maybe you need to sell some of the equipment you already have and invest in something else that works for you better. Or maybe you just need to actually set aside that time and remove those distractions um, that are preventing you from making music. So when it comes to making music at home and having a bedroom studio, know that you can start small. You don't have to have all the most fancy equipment. Content is key. Record your ideas, the music, the content that just makes you so excited. Get those on voice memos, write your lyrics, your rhymes in your journal, like whatever it is to create output, that is what's most important. And then from there, the other tools just maybe will improve your workflow, maybe will make you feel more proud and inspired about the work you're doing so you can actually continue to create more. But at the end of the day, what matters is that you put in the time, get some of your ideas down so you don't forget them and just continue to create. So thank you all for tuning in. I know that these are very stressful and trying times and it can be really difficult to actually stay active creatively, especially if we were used to making music in a different way before that we can no longer do right now. So I definitely recommend to you know, use the tips, tools that were given to you in this video and hopefully they will be able to help you become more productive. And we release videos every single week on Monday, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and tune in so you do not miss what's next. This is a supportive community here for independent artists that are doing it and making it on their own. So we will see you next time and just remember that you are enough. Now go create.
my bedroom studio, yeah. I got this bedroom studio, don't you know?